beautiful. Good morning and welcome to the United Church of Christ in Strongsville, Ohio. Okay, the paper bin in the parking lot is going to be gone. They are taking it away from us. So if you have any papers that you want to put in there, get them here as soon as possible because they're going to be starting this week. Uh, also, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, the ladies' Bible study is again. Graduation information. If you have anybody graduating, all the information has to be turned in by next Sunday on May 26th. Sign-up sheet for flowers is in Pilgrim Hall. It is $18 for one face and $36 for two. And also, you have the attendance seat sheets in your bulletin. Please fill them out and put them in the collection plate. This is the way we take attendance. Are there any other announcements? Linda. I am pleased to see that many of the summer Sunday school slots are signed up, but there are six more opportunities for people to work with our children this summer. And um, if you if you do sign up, there are lessons in the copy room that you can take and look at and call me if you have any questions. Do you hear that Sunday school sign up for assistant teachers? See Linda if you have any questions or you can call her too. Ken. Yes, today at 3 o'clock at the middle school uh, is our concert. Um, it's going to be very interesting. We have everything from a Baroque oboe solo to uh, George Gershwin, four tunes sung by Cindy Smith. And then there's going to be a quiz later. We're playing 16 tunes from the big band era, and we're going to see how many of you, of you can name those tunes. So bring a pencil and a piece of paper. Bring it right. And if you're under 60, you probably won't know any of them. Are there any other announcements? I have one. You're, gonna, you're all going to be helping me with the children's message today, so what I need you to do is take the Bible out of the pew pocket in front of you and see how it has those nice marker things hanging out. Stick at least one of those in page 79 of the New Testament part. It should be the opening of the book of the Gospel of John. Thank you. Are there other, any other announcements? Seeing none, let's continue with our worship service.
Please rise as they were able to call the worship. And thank you, Bob Clark. That was very beautiful. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and move in and through us. You are around us in every place. You speak to us through every person. You are with us in every season. You sing glad songs to us. You sweep us up in your commitment to transform all lives, all places. In every breath, in every song, in every moment, in every tongue, come and dance in the flame of the all, transform us. Come, Holy Spirit. Please join us in singing the first hymn, number eight, Come Thou Almighty King. Thank you for 
for coming. You know, it's always it's always sad when the choir's not here because the choir's not here, but the bells are here, so it's all good. <laughs> uh, as we start the time of joys and concerns, uh, if you did not see the prayer chain, Bill Robinson's uncle passed away on Thursday, and so the uh, service will be upcoming on this coming Wednesday, the 22nd, at Baker, Osinski, and Kensinger Funeral Home in Berea. Uh, and there's some more information about that. The, uh, there's a website where you can read the obituary as well. And I talked to Peter Smith yesterday. He sounded, he sounded chipper. <laughs> and he said uh, he's off all the pain meds. And things are going well. He saw the doctor post-op, and they expect to have him at the rehab center through July. And the doctor said, well, think of it this way. You know, when you get a knee done, what does it do? It bends one way. When you get your shoulder done, it's a whole different animal. So his rehab is going to be a little longer and slower. What other joys and concerns do we bring this morning? Yeah, Laura. My good friend Paul recently uh, asked me. He ended his birthday journey, and uh, I'd like to have continued prayers for Diane, who was an angel on earth for him. And also, I have a joy. It's Sam's birthday. Whoa! <laughs> Were you going to preach this morning? <laughs> you would always have a word. <laughs> Happy birthday. Good to have you. Elaine? I have a joy. My cousin's back. She certainly is. Looking good. Looking good. Yeah, uh, Sandy. One of our eight grandchildren got engaged this last time. Oh, one of the eight grandchildren is now engaged. Oh, lots of joys this morning. Bill. Deborah's mother is back in the hospital, fluid on the lungs, and waiting for surgery. And that waiting <coughs> is the hardest to depart. Yeah. Karen. Uh, if, if you all could keep uh, collecting your prayers, uh, she's been undergoing some, some issues uh, with her health, and that's also affecting her, her emotional health as well, and, uh, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, Colette is having some physical problems that, you know, you don't just have a physical problem. It gets in your head, and so everything is just, yeah, so keep her in prayer. We'll lift her up. Sherry. I have a joy. I'm happy for all those worker bees who make this church's best in Strongsville. Amen. Amen. And that's every one of you. Um, yeah, Audrey. <laughs> My uh, niece could use some prayers. Uh, she's eight months pregnant. She has uh, skyrocketing high blood pressure. Oh. I want to uh, induce the labor and uh, she could use some prayers. Her name is Shauna. Okay. She could use some prayers right now. Shauna is Audrey's niece, eight months pregnant and off the charts high blood pressure. Yeah. John. Yeah. Uh, my brother Andy Nemeth, who's eight years old, uh, went in Friday for catheterization. They found blockage in 199. So tomorrow he's having an open heart surgery. Okay. Andy Nemeth? Yeah. He has open heart surgery. And then uh, I talked to my son Kevin yesterday. Uh, he's in the Army 23 years. And two weeks ago, he was promoted to a full colonel. Oh, all right. That is a big deal. Thank you for sharing. Others? Judy. I don't, I don't know what to call this, but yesterday I was watching the uh, funeral for that fallen serviceman, and my neighborhood was totally quiet. I just, I, I couldn't get over how quiet it was. And when everything was over with, I heard about four different lawnmowers. It just like, everybody in the whole neighborhood was paying their respects. And it just, it really touched me that it did that. 
Yeah, continued prayers for the Durbin family. Uh, the police officer that was only 23 years old. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a, a powerful thing to watch the community come together in a circumstance like that. Mm -hmm. Continued prayers also. Uh, Bill Robinson's sister, Becky, lives in the greater Houston area. Has she got power back yet, Bill? Oh. She's been without power for three days now, and she's hoping to come up for the funeral. Um, yeah, need, need the power back on in Greater Houston. Let's pray. Holy One, you who gives us all true power to be your hands and feet, we come before you in this time of prayer, and in a moment of silence, lay before you the names and situations that hurt on our hearts or that bring us great joy. Jaden. George. Love and Will. As the breeze moves through this sanctuary, Lord, may we truly sense the presence of your Holy Spirit in each of our lives and together in all of our lives. We are grateful that you have chosen to share this gift to indwell within our spirits and to teach us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
And bell choir, since you don't have Bibles up there, you're going to help me and the children with the listening part of this. So you got your ears turned on? Come over here closer. I miss you. I like your butterfly skirt. Are there two more coming? Oh, that's right. Ember is over there too. Well, what's exciting in your life? Anything? You have some dances coming up, don't you? Some, some, are they recitals or shows? Both? Nice, nice. You're so busy. And are you into softball now? Baseball? Nice. What are you doing? Playing with your friends. That's the best part of the end of the school year. Making plans for summer. <coughs> There's Miss Ember. There comes Miss Alea, and there is Mr. Elliot. Okay, so today is Pentecost, and if you look around, you'll see a lot of people wearing red. And that's because that's the color for Pentecost. I even got out my red stole. So what I'm going to, when, when Pentecost came, all the disciples were together, and this huge wind blew, and then these little flames that looked like tongues of fire lighted on them, and everybody started speaking, but they all were speaking different languages. So all these people out here, the page you open to that's not page 79, on the count of three, start reading. And choir and kids, listen and see if you can understand anybody. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay, that's good. <laughs> did, did, did anybody's voice jump out at you? Could you hear anybody in particular or any words that came through? Did you hear somebody? Who did you hear? Did you hear Karen? What were you reading, Karen? The Psalms. From the Psalms. Wow, so you heard one of the Psalm pieces. Choir members, did anybody's voice jump out? Nope. <laughs> it was hard. But the miracle of Pentecost was that all those people, no matter what language they spoke, they were able to understand what was being said. So instead of sounding like gibberish, blah, 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 open to that other passage, and we'll read the first six verses. Ready? One, two, three. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, It's a confusing time. 
there's a lot going on and a lot of, of different voices vying for our attention and different groups all wanting something from us. And yet, every Sunday, here we are, gathering in community, because we know and we trust and we believe that in this place, God shows up. And God changes us so that we can change things. And one of the big ways that we can change things is to come together as a congregation, give from our financial gifts and from our talents, and make this corner of the world a better place. I am grateful for you, and I'm glad you are here this morning. Thank you for being here. meditations you place upon each of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your eye, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, in case you didn't already figure it out, this Sunday marks Pentecost, the day that Christians mark the arrival of God's Holy Spirit as promised by Jesus before he was crucified. It always falls 50 days after Resurrection Sunday, or Easter. Now, because Jesus was Jewish, it's important to frame this event within the setting of first century Judaism. Pentecost was a Jewish celebration long before those tongues of flame showed up to the disciples. The Jewish Pentecost, or Shavuot, commemorates the delivery of Torah to Moses on Mount Sinai and it falls 50 days after Passover. So this year that will be May 25th. Both Pentecost celebrations are similar in that they focus on God dwelling intimately in the lives of God's people. 
So I've been thinking a lot this week about what it must have been like for those who were in attendance at that first Pentecost, wondering what that might be like in our modern world. Did you know that in the world there are around 7,100 officially known languages? There are only 195 countries, but over 7,100 languages. The island of Papua New Guinea alone has over 800 distinct, recognized, documented languages. Now by comparison, how many languages do you suppose are recognized in the United States? One. Three. <laughs> One officially. Would you believe over 350? Even that is an awful lot, and about half of those are indigenous languages, meaning they were spoken by First Nations people or folks whose ancestors were born in this country. That's mind-blowing. Now think about this. When the United Nations convenes a general session, <laughs> translators are available, but only for the six official languages. Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian, and Spanish. And the only two languages used in professional secretariat exchanges at the UN are English and French. So now imagine that you've been chosen as a delegate to the UN, say from Indonesia, where a mere 700 or so languages are spoken. As a delegate, you would need to be fluent in at least one of those six official languages. As you sit in session, you can put on your headphones and voila, one of the translator's voices flows into your brain and things make sense. But imagine as the day wears on, you get tired and you need to take those headphones off and rest for a minute. Depending on the circumstance, you might suddenly find yourself in a situation where a conversation is going on all around you and nothing makes sense. Sense. It all sounds like gibberish, like when you were reading earlier. Put those headphones back on and it's clear again. You really have to marvel at the wonder of it all, that suddenly you're able to understand people from other lands as clearly as if they were your next door neighbors back home. This morning, the reading comes from Acts, more fully known as the book of the Acts of the Apostles. It was written by Luke, that same Luke who brought us the third of the four Gospels. And it says the Message Bible in your bulletin, but I've decided to read from a completely different resource this morning, the First Nations Version, also called Walking the Good Road. Listen and in particular notice the descriptive names of the places from whence people have come to Jerusalem to celebrate Shavuot. They had all gathered together in one place when suddenly the sound of a great windstorm came from spirit world above and could be heard throughout the house where they were sitting. They saw flames of fire coming down from above, separating and resting on each of their heads. The Holy Spirit had come down upon them and began to fill them with his life and power. New languages began to flow out from their mouths, languages they had never learned, given by the Holy Spirit. The sacred village of peace, Jerusalem, was filled with devoted members of the tribes of Israel who had come for the festival from every nation under the sun. A crowd began to gather when they heard the loud noise. In wonder and amazement, the crowd began to ask, how is it that these people from Circle of Nations, Galilee, are speaking in our many languages? For we can all understand them in the languages of the places we have come from. There are people here for the festival from nations and places close by and far away, who are members of the tribes of Israel and those from outside nations who have been taken into the tribes. 
They come from the land of victory, land in the middle, land of the ancient ones. Many come from land between rivers, land of promise, land of handsome horses, land of black waters, land of the rising sun. Some come from dry wood and many tribes and the territory of land of tears near the strong wall of Jericho. There are travelers from village of iron, both tribal members and outsiders who have become tribal members along with those who come from flesh eater island and land of wanderers. We can hear them in the languages of these nations telling about the great and powerful things done by the Great Spirit. Many were amazed and confused and began to ask each other, what can this possibly mean? But others in the crowd just laughed and said, they're drunk on new wine. Can you imagine to hear and experience all that cacophony and then it's suddenly resolved while you're still aware that something is different. All those different languages, not just dialects, but languages, and you can understand every word as though it were spoken in your own native tongue. It's easy to understand why some might prefer to believe that these men and women were drunk than speaking from God. Peter or stands on the rock, as he is called here, quickly sets the crowd straight. No one among us is drunk on wine, for it is still the middle of the morning. This is not what you think it is. This is what the prophet Joel spoke of long ago when he said, In the last days, says Creator, I will rain down my spirit upon all human beings, from every nation. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, young warriors will see visions, and elders will dream dreams. When that time comes, my spirit will rain down on all who serve me, both men and women, and they will boldly speak my words. There will be powerful signs and omens in the spirit world above and on the earth below, blood and fire with clouds of smoke. The sun will grow dark and the moon will be red like blood as the great and dreadful day of Creator shines like the sun. Then the ones who cry out to spirit will be made whole and set free. If you think about it, the response from the crowd was really pretty typical. Some think the prophet is crazy or drunk. Others hear the words, but they filter them through a lens of fear or, at best, curiosity. But remember, the calling of any prophet like Joel is twofold. To be both foretelling and forthtelling to speak of the days to come, and to call out the present the way God sees it. It's a powerful calling to be a prophet, not one to be taken lightly. Listen again to the words the prophet Joel spoke. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now when a prophet begins to speak, the tendency of the listener is to assume that he or she is foretelling events that are coming in the future. 
But what if instead of hearing it as a prediction, Peter's audience heard these words as speaking to what was already happening all around them, and not necessarily in a bad way, and they just didn't realize it. If they had only known that the actions of their ancestors were preparing the way for what is happening in the present. To me, this is one of the most important ways to approach a prophecy. Look around and see what's going on and wonder what we might have done more or done differently on our way to this place if we had only realized God was already dwelling among us. So we are now roughly four years past the start of the pandemic that changed everything about the ways we work and shop and worship, even the ways we hold meetings and interact with friends and family. It's easy to remember how awful it was, but we are called to live as a people of hope. And one thing that became so readily apparent as we navigated those frightening first weeks was the unwavering dedication of so many people. We lost over one million Americans to the coronavirus. Think how many more we might have lost if it weren't for the dedication of nurses and other health care workers. Everyone has a story of a friend or relative who battled the virus, even risking their own health and safety. Day and night, these angels continued to care for their patients. At the time, we had very little idea what we were up against, and the finger-pointing and the blame games continue even today with no real purpose beyond politics. But as the pandemic wore on, it became that what we were witnessing was indeed a labor of love and courage. Even beyond health care, we found ourselves having to flex and bend in new ways in order to keep life going. Churches were in a particularly unique situation. In the midst of so much uncertainty, people's hearts were hungry for solace, for comfort, for answers. Science seemed confused. We wanted something to help us understand, but the doors to our worship spaces were closed. And so we punted. We figured out how to create a virtual service that could be viewed online at any time by anyone in need of a word of hope and comfort. At the time, I didn't really think of it as a labor of love. We were simply doing what we always did in a new way for a new circumstance. And this is what the church has always done at its best moments, remaining a place of hope in a cold, hard, frightening world, a place where everyone is welcome. Every hour of every day, bad news shouts while hope and love whisper, determined not to let fear get the last word. We have learned a lot through the pandemic and at a tremendous cost, but God's Holy Spirit has continued to whisper, challenging us, bring everybody into the table, bring everybody, trust each other, don't be afraid, to fail. Take a risk. Be open to whatever comes next. View the future with curiosity and hope. <clears throat> believe in each other and believe in God. I will say that again. Believe in each other and believe in God. If we have learned nothing else over the past four years and counting, we have had to learn that. Listen for God's voice above the noise of politics and injustice. Look around you through eyes that seek to love, not to injure or exclude. 
Allow your heart to be broken by the things that break God's heart. Poverty, hunger, homelessness, loneliness, callous indifference, and greed. What if we look deeply enough and long enough to see beyond the darkness and catch those glimmers of God's holy light that are already present all around us? It's Pentecost. Listen beyond the words and allow yourself to hear God speaking within each heart. You might find your heart feeling strangely warm as you realize once more, God is still speaking. And we are still listening. Amen. The final hymn is probably less than familiar to you. Do the best you can, and you will catch on at least to the chorus. and then we'll sing together.
you are a bunch of gamers. Thank you. And you know, the thing is when you don't know the tune, you see and hear the words more. And that was really the point of that hymn, Out of the United Methodist Hymnal, with Native American connections in it. Um, to, to hear those words of many gifts, all from one spirit. Receive this benediction from Nathan Nettleton at Laughing Bird Ministries. Go out into the world and labor to bring forth new life. Dream dreams, pursue visions, and speak of God's goodness in the words of those who would hear. And may the God who breathed life into creation be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to your dreaming, and may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of the living Christ. Amen.